Hey, welcome to Church Online. My name is Lisa, and I hope you are really enjoying your 4th of July holiday weekend. Um, I just want to take a quick minute to remind you why we're doing this online service. We're doing this to help give our volunteers a break, to help them rest and enjoy some time with their friends and family. We want to thank all of our volunteers so much. If you guys participated in any of our summer outreach events, whether you walked in the Blue Tip Parade or you helped in Kids Land, or if you just helped with the fireworks this past week, thank you so much. We can't wait to see how God uses that and, imp and impacts our community through those events. And especially if you volunteer on a Thursday or a Sunday, whether you are holding a door, pouring coffee, holding a baby, teaching the kiddos downstairs about Jesus, all of those things have such a big impact. And these services wouldn't be possible without you. So thank you. And we really hope that you are able to use this weekend to rest and enjoy time with your friends and family. All right, so let's get started. We're going to jump in. I wanted to share something with you that has really impacted me recently <laughs> that I'm working on, that I'm working through, hopefully working through it. Um, when my oldest two kids were younger, they got to spend a lot of time with my mom, with their Nana. And like any good grandma, they played a lot of games. They even made up new games sometimes. And this one day they made up this especially fun game. And I don't think they ever really gave it a name or anything, um, but this was the game. They would walk right up to you. They would look you straight in the eyes they would roll up their chunky little toddler fists and say, you want to fight? <laughs> now, it was a little concerning, but mostly it was absolutely adorable and hilarious. Those were some of the best fights that I have ever been invited to. Unfortunately, those are not the only fights that I've been invited to. Now, I'm not talking about actual physical fights. I am not in some underground fight club for pastor's wives, <laughs> but I'm talking about the fights or battles that show up for me in my normal everyday life. A lot of them still are with my kids. Um, we fight over screen time, what's for dinner, why they can't eat a snack 30 minutes before dinner, homework, chores, brushing their teeth, why those shorts are too short, why you have to put on clean socks and underwear every day, and why boys have to wear shirts, or I'm sorry, why boys don't have to wear shirts, but girls do. And I know this will shock you, but I actually also fight with my husband, just a little bit. <laughs> we fight about what's the correct temperature for the thermostat, uh, where we're going to eat on date night, how many activities or sports we let the kids sign up for, uh, the Christmas budget. That's a hot topic one. <laughs> I even work in accounting and HR, and so you can imagine the opportunities that I have at work to engage in fights. Spiritually, I have to fight against thoughts and feelings of doubt, doubts about God, about how God feels about me. I have to fight to forgive to love and to treat other people better than they deserve. Mentally, I have to fight against anxious thoughts, depressive feelings, the negative soundtrack in my mind. I have to fight against perfectionism, constant overthinking and never ending stream of distractions. There are so many fights, all day, every day. It's like that gross mythical creature where you cut off its head and two more grow in its place. The fights are never ending. And I'm betting that you feel the same way. Now, our lists are probably a little bit different. They're not going to be the same. But you have a list, a never ending list of things, thoughts, people that you're fighting. Now, I want us to look at a pretty familiar story in the Bible. Um, it's actually a story about a really epic fight, David and Goliath. 
I learned something new about this fight in our book club this past spring, and I'm pretty excited to share it with you. So you're going to find this story in 1 Samuel 17, and I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I bet you remember the scene. So you've got the Philistines, the bad guys on one side camped out on the valley, and you have the good guys, the Israelites, camped out on the other side of the valley. These are the Israelites, God's people, the good guys. And the Philistines, they've got a giant, a literal giant, over nine feet tall, named Goliath. And every day, for 40 days, he comes out and taunts the Israelite camp and the Israelite army. Now, one day, David shows up. David has been home taking care of the sheep, and three of his older brothers have been at the camp in the army. David shows up with basically a charcuterie board for his brothers, right? His daddy sends him with some cheese and bread and grain to help the soldiers. He hears and sees about what Goliath is doing. The other soldiers start telling him about what's going on. And David starts asking around more and more questions. And he essentially says, who is this punk talking smack about my God, the living God? And what would I get if I kill this dude? Now that's the Lisa Barton translation. <laughs> but David's fired up. He is ready to fight a shepherd boy wanting to fight a literal giant. And that's usually the part of the story that we focus on, right? This epic battle between a shepherd boy and a giant, between David and Goliath. And of course, we're drawn to this story and we want to focus on the story because we all love a good underdog story. Even people who don't believe in the Bible use phrases like, oh, this is a David and Goliath fight or a David and Goliath moment because this was a huge moment and it was a huge victory for David and for the Israelites, for God's people. Now, many would argue that this might have been David's greatest victory and the catalyst to many other victories in his life and for the people of Israel, for God's people, it changed the trajectory of David's life. But did you know that there was another fight that day? There was another fight. So guess who hears David talking to the soldiers? One of his other older brothers, Eliab. And of course, like the good, supportive, and encouraging older brother that he was, he walks right up to David, gives him a fist bump, and starts getting him pumped up for battle, right? Encouraging and telling him, dude, you've fought bears and lions. You've totally got this. God has been preparing you for this fight. Go get that giant. Not exactly. That's not what he says. What Eliab says to David is, what are you doing here? Ouch. He said, what are you doing here? And then he says, what about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? Now, those are fighting words, right? What are you doing here? Don't you have some sheep, just a few of them to take care of? So what do you think David does? I can tell you what I would have done. I would have walked right up to Eliab, looked him straight in the face, rolled up my fist and said, you want to fight? <laughs> now, does David fight him? He doesn't. David actually walks away. Well, he says something like, dude, chill out. I was just asking questions. Again, Lisa Barton translation. But that's it. He says that and he walks away. Now David could have fought his brother. Anyone with a sibling 
can testify that David really, really wanted to fight his brother. But he didn't. He fought Goliath. So let me ask a question. What if David had fought Iliad and never got around to fighting Goliath? If David would have wasted his time, his energy, and his strength to fight his brother, he probably would not have had the time, the strength, or the energy to fight Goliath. And maybe he still would have tried to fight him and lost. And then what would David's life had looked like? I mean, we don't really know, right? But if you remove his greatest victory, you can't help but wonder how that would have impacted David's life. And not just David's life, it certainly would have had an implication on the entire Israelite army that day. So here's the thing that God's teaching me that I am working through. <laughs> I am limited. You are limited. We have limited time, energy, and strength, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. If we engage in every fight that we're invited to, we won't have what it takes to win the fights that really matter. We'll miss out on our Goliath fights, the fights that God has created us for and called us to. I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to miss out on anything that God has for me. And not just for me, like personally, but remember the ripple effect that this victory had. The victory that David had had a ripple effect on everyone. The good that came from David choosing the right fight. I don't want this just for me personally. I want it for my family, for anyone and everyone who could benefit from me choosing the right fights. So if you're like me, you've probably got a couple questions. <laughs> I would have a lot because I'm an overthinker, but I can think of two main questions. The first one being, wait, God wants me to fight? It's like growing up a church. I don't remember that as like the WWJD, what would Jesus do sermon series? <laughs> like go pick a fight. Um, so we'll answer that question. The second question is, how do I know which fights really matter? So we'll jump into the first question first. Does God really want me to fight? And we're going to go to Ephesians for our answer. Always good to go to scripture <laughs> for our answers. Ephesians 6, 12 says that for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. So yes, God does call us to wrestle, to fight, but only against our real enemy. We are not called to fight against flesh and blood. Sorry for those of you hoping that this is like a message and announcement that we are starting a Mosaic Fight Club. <laughs> it's not happening. Sorry. <laughs> we are called to fight spiritual fights against our real enemy. So first question, yes, God does call us to fight. Second question, what are the right fights? The eternal ones, the ones that matter. Let's, again, look at scripture. We're going to jump into 1 Timothy chapter 6. So this is written by Paul, and Paul is like a giant of faith one of the heroes of faith. He wrote most of the New Testament and he's writing to Timothy, who is like a student of his or, or an apprentice. He is studying under Paul and wants to help continue to grow the church, to grow the mission and the church that Jesus started. So 1 Timothy 6, starting verse 11, Paul talking to Timothy, but you, Timothy, are a man of God. So run from all of these evil things Pursue righteousness, a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. 
fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you and which you have declared so well before many witnesses. So what does that look like? Fight the good fight for the true faith. How do we do that? How do we fight the good fight for the true faith? Well, I think Paul kind of gives us some hints right in the, the scripture we just read. It's righteousness, a godly life, faith, love, perseverance, gentleness. These are all good things, great things that we should be fighting for. Righteousness, a godly life, faith, love, perseverance, gentleness. Now, for one of you, for some of you, one of these things on the list might just be popping out at you right now, and that might be your next fight. For others, maybe God, through the Holy Spirit, is laying something else on your heart, bringing something else to mind that you need to be fighting for in this season. Maybe you're in a season where you need to be intentionally fighting for your marriage or fighting for the faith of your children or fighting for your own faith. Those are just some examples though. And we're not all called to fight the same fights or at the same time. We're all in different seasons and stages of our faith. So how can you know what God is calling you to fight right now? In this season, in this moment, how can you know where to aim your time, your strength, your energy? Ironically, the answer starts with the fight. You have to fight to spend time with the only one who can truly answer that question for you. Author, speaker, Bible teacher Hosanna Wong says it like this, you will know, the, you will know what battles to fight when you first and foremost fight to spend real time with God. Make that the most important fight of your life. You will know what battles to fight when you first and foremost fight to spend real time with God. Make that the most important fight of your life. Alyssa spent two weeks doing an amazing job of showing us that God is still speaking and encouraging us to listen. But in order to recognize God's voice, we need to spend time with Him. We need to spend time in the Bible reading His Word. We need to spend time in prayer listening to His voice. That's how you're going to know. That's how you're going to know which fights to fight. Remember, I'm limited. You're limited. We can't fight all the fights we get an invitation to. And we're surrounded by a culture that wears burnout and busyness like a badge of honor. So maybe you need to pick a fight with your calendar, with your schedule, with your routines. But this is it. This is how we're gonna know which fights to fight. We need to make this the most important fight of our life, to spend real time with God because that's how we're going to know what fights to fight. What fights to fight. <laughs> He's going to reveal that to us in our time with Him. So I'll leave this with you. You're limited. You are invited to more fights than you have time, energy, or strength for. Is it possible that you are fighting some fights right now that you shouldn't be fighting? Is it possible that those fights are exhausting you, that, that you are dr being drained in those fights of your energy and your time, and now you don't have the time, energy, and strength for the fights that really matter? And if that's true, what does that mean? What does it mean that you're exhausted from the lesser battles and you don't have the time, strength, or energy for the most important ones? What are the implications of that? What victories might you be missing out on? What breakthroughs might you be missing out on because you're not aiming your time, strength, and energy at the most important fights? I challenge you to take some time to pray and ask God, 
Ask him, God, what fights am I fighting that I need to walk away from? What fights do I need to walk away from, God? And what areas in my life, what fights do I need to square up with? Do I need to clench up my fist and say, you want to fight? What areas of your life do you need to do that with? Ask God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for writing all of these stories and letters for us so that we could get to know you more, know your heart, and know this grand story that you're writing all throughout history. We ask that you would help us with this making spending time with you the most important fight of our lives. And that we trust and believe that through that time with you, Lord, that you would reveal to us the fights that you want us to fight. That you would reveal to us the fights that we need to walk away from. And that you would give us the strength and energy needed to fight those fights. We are limited, Lord, but you are not. And we trust and believe that you will give us the victory to fight when we fight the real fights, and it would be through your strength, your wisdom, your power that you would give us those victories, Lord. And we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that he fought the most important fight of all time and won the greatest victory of all time when he conquered sin and death so that we could have new life in you. Thank you for this time together. And thank you for your son. And it's in his name we pray for all of these things. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. I pray that you were encouraged by this. And we can't wait to see you in church on Thursday or Sunday of next week. I hope you got some good outtakes, Jonathan. Some good bloopers. Hey, welcome to Church Online. This is that we have, and for the people who come to enjoy that time together. Nope. Done. <laughs> Getting some good outtakes for you, Jonathan. Done.